Hey everybody, I wanted to take a quick second out of today's podcast to tell you about our friends over at Live Action Games. Uh, They're Davenport's only hatchet-throwing range and newest escape room, and they're having their grand opening on September 22nd. Uh, They're located inside North Park Mall at 320 Kimberly Road, and they're, uh, they're inside next to Disc Replay. And to celebrate their grand opening, they're having their first ever hatchet throwing tournament. Uh, just $10 buys your way into the tournament and gives you a chance to win uh, any one of the three prize packages, uh, top, top tier prize packages. Third place gets their $10 back, as well as a pair of tickets to any experience inside live action games. Uh, and then they're also throwing in two day passes to Pro Tournament League. Uh, second place gets $50 cash back, a four-pack of tickets to live-action games, a $20 gift certificate to Texas Roadhouse, yum, $20 gift certificate to Disc Replay, uh, and then four day passes to Pro Tournament League. Uh, Then the top-tier prize package, get ready for it, first place gets $200 cash back, a nine-pack of tickets to any experience at live-action games, a $40 gift certificate to Texas Roadhouse, yum again, a $40 gift certificate to Disc Replay, and four day passes to Pro Tournament League. The list of sponsors grows each day. That means the prize package grows each day. Uh, only a limited number of participants will be able to compete in the event, so hop on it while you can, folks. Um, and also, as an added bonus, if you mention the Breakfast Lads Tribunal podcast, you will receive $2 off an escape room per person or... 30 minutes of hatchet throwing for just $10. So, I mean, you, you can't beat that, folks. Uh, so head on over to Live Action Games inside North Park Mall in Davenport, Iowa, and tell them the Breakfast Lads sent you. To the uh, newest episode of the Breakfast or Breakfast Lads Tribunal, uh, this is Brandon and this is Jake. I'm Ian, and we are here today with the uh, with the incomparable, the beautiful Julian Vanderbilt. How oh, you doing, buddy? Thank you. I don't know what incomparable means, but I appreciate it. <laughs> I, I saw it on Google once, and I was like, I've got to use that in a sentence quick before I forget it. It's not um, a bad one. <laughs> it's solid. Um, so uh, we brought Julian in today to talk about. Uh, this is, well, hold on, hold on, real quick. I just want to say you're the <laughs> you're the first uh, return guest that we've yeah. had. Yeah, you're the only person yeah, yeah, yeah. that's been on the podcast twice uh, because everybody else sucks. So, <laughs> right. and, and you don't. The fact that you like me enough to bring me on a second time, I think, speaks volumes to uh, your guys' level of tolerance. Really, <laughs> <laughs> really, what it is. <laughs> I, tolerance. I, I love that you said. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you said that to Julian and across the table is is Ian, who's whose second episode is also this one, and he's just like, "Yep, yeah, I'm back too." <laughs> <laughs> Great to be here, and you know, <laughs> going through some times, guys. <laughs> and it's picturesque that you're surrounded by by growlers <laughs> full of alcohol. It's, like, it's been a bad day, y'all. That's my life. <laughs> surrounded by growlers. Oh, yeah. Good decisions. Is that what they call cougars nowadays? Growlers? Oh, that's oh, hell yeah. That's God. Somebody missed the boat. This is bullshit. Yeah. Hell so, yeah. I'm surrounded by a growler. <laughs> I totally missed, totally missed the opportunity to call them growlers. Damn it. Uh, do you think it's too late in the game to start that, though? Oh, no. We can start that. Fuck yes. It's on. Fuck yes. Uh, we can do so, whatever we want because this is America and we're free to do anything we want. Anything. Within the confines of the law. Anything. Anything within the confines of the law. And that's the thing. He's a vet. So he said right. that. That makes it fucking legal. 100% Let's true. Go. Right. <laughs> so if you're listening to this episode, uh, hashtag growler. Also, uh, I, I know we, we keep like stalling uh, what we actually came here for. Uh, I got in an argument with some guy about the topic that we're going to talk about. And I said... Yeah. I just like like I, I never bring up the fact that I'm a vet ever except for like times like this because I fucking love it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I'm like, look, you know, I don't care what people do as long as it's legal. And 
some guy. Oh, this this was on your post. It probably was. I that think thing it was. was crazy before. And I knew somebody, it happened. Your, somebody, your Facebook always incites a riot. It seems uh, like people are just like, let me fucking tell you. <laughs> well, some guy was like, was like, I don't think you know what freedom means, and I was like, what? Are you right. Really? Right. Are you bring up a, a legal issue saying that any like freedom is literally anything chaos is free like right. shut the fuck up you right. fucking internet troll uh, alright anyway <laughs> <laughs> now uh, speaking of just the word vet I've found that in my time on this earth I've never treated a cat before well that that's, that's exactly what I was getting at I, I found that I found that uh, 50% of the time I make that stupid joke yeah uh, people either like uh-huh, thank you very much. Or they go, shut the fuck up, we're talking about my country. Oh my goodness. Like, yeah, it's like, I support, I support vets. <laughs> oh, me too, I love dogs and cats. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it incites rage like no other. Um, but yeah, we, so we've got, we've got Julian with us today. We'd like to talk a little bit about, um, well, what we talked about a year ago that we'd hoped... Would would become something that's like okay now it's just it's part of it like we're over it right everybody's still definitely not over it man it it, it it's fresh we're talking about kneeling yes yes mm-hmm. so um, the the debate is still going on uh, whether men and women have served for uh, for our right to choose to stand or to kneel or if they if they fought for um, us having to stand. Uh, how do you how do you feel about it? I, I'm I'm guessing I I have a pretty good grasp of how you still feel about right. it. But my at home. yeah, this is this is the the rock upon which I will bleed out is this argument right here that I I don't so much mind the uh, the rhetoric that kind of goes back and forth. I just think that it takes a little bit of empathy uh, on either side of the 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 aisle of the argument that nobody's really willing to give. And here's yeah. the thing that, that drives me fucking crazy. If you are a veteran of the, of the United States military, first of all, thank you for your service. Second of all, you have every right to feel however you want to feel. Right. But it's the people who come in with no uh, experience in the military uh, and they want to use the military as their platform to make this argument right. about something like the let's let's start off with what the whole anthem protest in the NFL and now spreading to other sports is about yeah. it is about injustice in the criminal justice system uh, primarily racially motivated and uh, in my personal opinion more class motivated than anything else uh Versus the idea that it is intentionally disrespectful, disrespecting right. uh, America's troops and right. veterans. Uh, in some, and, and if that is in fact the case, if that were the case, first of all, why? Right. At exactly. no point in time has that been the case. Right. Um, but I think the most important thing about this is those people who who like to use the military as part of their argument. Well, it's disrespectful to the troops. No, you think. It's right. disrespectful to the troops. If right. you're a troop and you feel disrespected, you are fully entitled to feel that way. I think it's more the fact that, that they don't like it and they're like, uh, uh, the troops. The yeah, troops. I need yeah. something. I need yeah. something. Like, fucking, you know, and I'm, I don't want to get into the weeds of the politics, but Donald Trump, whatever, he had five deferments or some bullshit like that, never right. served it, all this, you know, shit. And he wants to come out and say, they're disrespecting the troops. Well, we have a veteran sitting here at the table. Uh, Jake, do you feel disrespected by this? Nope. Well, Jake's cool with it. So Nate Boyer was cool with it. And yeah. for those who don't know, Nate Boyer was the fucking Green Beret who told Colin Kaepernick to kneel in the first place because it's a sign of respect. Well, because he started off sitting. He was right? sitting at first. Right. And Nate Boyer did the intelligent thing, which was and to say, to the man. I fought so that everyone in America would feel the freedom and justice and opportunities were for them so right. that everyone had that that you know the dream the american dream they could have that there is a section of society that does not feel that the flag which represents america also represents them right or at least not fairly yeah so i'm going to go talk to this guy and figure out why that is and they sat down they had a talk and he goes i completely understand where you're coming from 
why don't you take a knee as a sign of respect for those who have died instead of sitting down? And Kaepernick said, yeah, you know what? That sounds like a pretty fucking good idea. Yeah. And he took a knee the next time, and now we have the kneeling thing. And somewhere along the line, somebody decided that this act of respect, this show of, of coming forward and finding the medium ground with a veteran right. was, in fact, disrespectful to all veterans. And they kind of took that and ran with it. So if you're a veteran and you feel disrespected, you have every right to feel that way. If you're not a veteran and you want to say, you're disrespecting the troops. No, no, no. You don't like this. Right. But you don't get to use the military as your crutch. You can be offended for you, but don't be offended for people who may not be offended. Exactly. Because the military is a representative of American life. It's a rep- it, is, it is black and it's white and it's Christian and it's Muslim and it's young and it's old and... It's men and it's women, and they have you know the full spectrum of political and socioeconomic. Well, not the super rich, but most of the socioeconomic spectrum right, they're is up, they're represented up. in the military. So you're not just gonna find that they are unified in one stance, right? Even I mean, and it doesn't it doesn't give you fucking you know carte blanche to to have whatever you want to say, whatever you want to be a good person fucking Timothy McVeigh was in the military right all right yeah, yeah. like yeah. like this it really is the total the totality of America is the bright the best of us is recognized within the military but that is still the best of us still includes the total spectrum right. so the fact that people who don't have that connection who aren't part of that fraternity and that yeah. brotherhood sisterhood whatever you want to call it the family that is the military that protects us all and gives us the right to kneel yeah, the fact that those people who have who aren't a part of that feel like they can take that subsection of American society and throw it in everyone's face to say you're not a patriot because I don't like what you're doing. Right. It's it's bullshit and it drives me fucking crazy. It, what's crazy about it is that you know they say like we feel we feel that like you're disrespecting veterans, and uh, and Kaepernick says no, I'm not disrespecting veterans, and they're like yeah, you are. Right. Yeah, it's like, right. It's like a right. child's game, and then you know, people like me, you know, I come out. And I'm like, no, I don't feel disrespected. You know, like I, I understand what they're doing it for. You know, it wasn't just like a like one day they're like, ah, oh, white people, I fucking hate him. I'm just gonna like, there's a reason for it, right? Yeah. And uh, and I agree. I agree with you. Also, I have friends who are veterans who are like, I'm gonna stand. You know, like mm-hmm. I don't agree with the kneeling. That's fine. Like, you know, nobody nobody's telling you that everybody has to kneel. Yeah. But, you know, like, you know, you, you respect... It, it would be... It's, like, akin to, like, if if I'm an environmentalist and I say, oh, no, I don't want a straw because I, I don't think they're necessary or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've got to drink with a straw. But, like, if, <laughs> if uh, you know, if I was like, no, I don't want a straw, you're like, oh, you're disrespecting... Plastic company. It's like, no, dude, I just don't want a fucking straw. Like, right. This is just something that, this is my stand that I'm mm-hmm. taking. Like, you take it or not, but like, we don't have to make it, we don't have to make an issue out of this. Right. right. You know? Well, and you touched on, I think, the biggest thing, which is the redirection of the meaning of the protest, um, yeah. which is my second biggest issue with it, is that it's, it's kind of like the whole Black Lives Matter versus All Lives Matter movement. Black Lives Matter isn't saying that nobody else's lives matter. The statement in, a, in and of itself is trying to affirm that black lives do matter. So yeah. when you take it and you say, well, all lives matter, well, you're diluting the fucking issue right. of the argument. So when you take this, this protest, which is about the, the corruption within the criminal justice system, and you say, it's not about that, it's about the military... Well, you don't get to choose what someone else's protest is about. That's right. not your. Right. You don't have that platform. That's not for you to fucking decide. You can't tell someone what they're fucking protesting. The yeah. meme goes around now. Rosa Parks wasn't protesting the bus. You know, so and so wasn't disrespecting right. or wasn't disrespecting the restaurant or whatever the fuck right. it is. And that's exactly right. It hits it square on the nose. You can't tell someone else what their protest is about. Yeah. You have to acknowledge the protest. And if you won't acknowledge the thing that they're protesting, then you're never going to find right. common ground. And I, I, I hate to admit this, but when when the whole Black Lives movement started up, there was Black Lives Matter too, that kind of thing. When it first came up, I had in my head I never I never posted publicly or anything like that. But in my head, I'm like, well, everybody matters. But then reading other people's posts, like, no, 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 that's not 
that's not the point. The point is they're basically we're saying we're here too, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, like when somebody has a cancer rally, they're not saying. Uh, fuck heart attacks. Yeah. You know, right. Right. Exactly. No, exactly. Right. We're just saying like this.